Hello cave dwellers, what's this you say, a toy in the cave? Well yes it's big track but not as we know it. Today we have a guest in the cave for a show and tell and big track is what he's brought with him, it's Howard from Dubious Engineering. So here he is with our first show and tell in the cave. Come on in Howard. Hey Neil, how are Hello. you? Okay. Welcome to the cave. Thank you very much, what a spectacular <laughs> cave you have. Thank you yeah. and uh, the reason I've asked Howard here today is because uh, he owns something that's uh, from my childhood and perhaps from some of yours as well, and it's the big track here, um, the big track from 1979, I believe, and Howard's done um, something a bit special with it, actually, something a bit, a bit different, and it's not the big track we all remember. But before we get onto that, Howard, um, your channel, Dubious Engineering, I would describe it as um, technical, yes, fun, and... Uh, Bonkers, bonkers. To, be, to be honest. Is that yeah, a fair so assessment I've, I've, of your absolutely channel? Absolutely, it is quite bonkers. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about um, some of the things that you do? Yeah, okay. It normally it ends up with a few friends popping over, um, a few drinks, and uh, we get into making something. Uh, we're all generally makers. Um, and, and those things that you've made, I've seen, have ranged from uh, self-driving lawnmowers. Robot lawnmowers. Yeah. Um, um, super, induction heaters. Yep, super powerful torches made from baked bean tins yeah, and CPU yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, heat sinks. Um, some quite interesting and some quite fun stuff. Uh, I, I certainly enjoy it. But when I saw this, I just I just had to get my hands on it and, and find out more about it. So this is the big track. Let's talk about the big track in its original form. Uh, it was made by Milton Bradley in, in 1979. Was. I was quite surprised when I heard 1979 because uh, this was in my household in the mid 80s. I can't, to be honest, I can't remember if it was mine or if it was a friend who bought it round, but it was certainly there uh, and we had a lot of fun with it. Now, how it worked was there's this keypad on the back and it's, it is or it was capable of remembering 16 commands, I believe. It had a 16 command memory. And those commands would be um, go forward 10, turn left 20. I can't remember, was that centimetres or metres? I, think, I or? think it was actually feet or feet. something okay. like that. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and the, the turns were angular, so you could tell it to turn... Um, I think they were 30 degrees, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was... Uh, Quite, Quite simplistic, but impressive for the time, I'd say. Absolutely. And it made all these weird and wonderful noises when you poked it. And when you pressed go, it went bleep, bleep, bleep. And, and off it trundled on its way following the uh, the programs that you'd commanded yeah. it to do. I really wanted one as a kid, but um, unfortunately, uh, my parents had bought me an Acorn Electron. Oh, OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's not such a bad trade-off. <laughs> to be fair, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very good. So. And if you had the Acorn Electron, actually, that brings me on to the next thing I was going to mention. What this reminded me um, of in the 80s was part of the Computers for Schools project. Right. There was the BBC Micro, the Electron was yeah. a spin-off of that. Yeah. But what we used to use in school was a piece of software called Logo. And I don't know if you okay. remember that. No. So it was a basic programming language, but it also had a graphical element on the screen where you had a little triangle, which was called the Logo Turtle. And you would program your basic commands to say, oh, yes. likewise, go forward 10, turn yes. left so many degrees... And it would gradually teach you programming. So you yeah. would then add loops, variables and constants to um, to create pretty patterns. I think it was just called Turtle, actually, when uh, when when I was a kid. But was yes. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now, yeah. my anyway. school had Logo and we had yeah. BBC Micros and that was great. Yeah. But if you were in a really well-off school with a lot of space and a lot of resources, what you could buy was the Logo Turtle, which was a physical thing that would interface with the computer. And then it just like the big track... It would follow those commands. And one of those commands was pen down. Yes. So the pen would go down and it would trundle around the room. Hopefully you'd put paper down and you weren't drawing <laughs> on the, uh, the the parquet floor in With the gym. With a permanent marker. <laughs> <laughs> and you would draw these lovely patterns. So uh, I, I always loved that as a kid. And Big Track for me was the closest that I could get to that at yeah. home. I'd, maybe we can tape a permanent marker to the back of it and uh, <laughs> draw yeah, some pictures. Definitely. In fact, that's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> we have had it doing some interesting things uh -huh. in the kitchen uh, involving balloons and knives. This is Robot Wars, Big Track style. Big Track versus, what, what's it fighting with here, Howard? So we've got a robot lawnmower that uh, my good friend Richard and I developed. Okay. Um, and the robot lawnmower is using um, uh, sensors on it to make sure it doesn't bump into things. The blades have been disabled. Um, there's blades cutting blades underneath. 
And uh, what, what we have uh, also is a Roomba, uh, which is a Hoover. Mm -hmm. And the Hoover um, also has balloons and knives attached to it, as <laughs> you can see. And basically, yeah, these, these, these guys are just sort of fighting. And, and, and th this was the amazing thing. What we didn't expect to happen, we expected Roomba to win because it's probably the most active of the three robots. Mm, now, what we, you, you say that, I would have expected a lawnmower to win. Yeah, on, really, on the, yeah, 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 on the <laughs> weapons side of things, absolutely. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, the big track actually took... Took the first prize. Mm, well, yeah, I, I wasn't going to spoil the uh, the ending. Oh, I've got to spoil it. All right, no, but you should check that video yeah, out on yeah, Howard's channel and, yeah. and see how the battle pans out. It's it's quite the spectacle. Um, now you've gone on to improve it, but before you did that. Did you know that the Soviets had made some improvements to uh, to Big Track? I didn't know. No. That. Okay, so Big Track was extremely popular in the UK uh, and in the US, I believe. And uh, the Russians wanted a piece of the action, and Russians being Russians, they invented their own. They, they created a knockoff copy. You've heard of Konkordsky? Well, this is Big Trackski. There were, in fact, two models released by the Russians, the first being the Lunacod 1, sharing its name with the first remotely controlled vehicle to drive on the lunar surface. Lunacod 1 was very similar to Big Track, with the exception that it had a bumper on the front. So if it detected it had bumped into something, it would stop the program that was in progress. This model was then further improved with its successor, the Planet Cod, which had a spinning top which you could program to launch, a weaponized big track, perhaps foreseeing Howard's Robot Wars. So I thought, well, it would be a great idea if we took the old computer out of it and put a new computer in it. Mm -hmm. And Arduino seemed the right way forward. Okay, so with the Arduino, there, there are a whole number of um, single uh, board computers available these days. Yes, so the Raspberry right, Pi, yeah. the Arduino, and all yeah. of the others that are out there. Why, why specifically did you choose the Arduino? Um, I, I had a play around with a couple of Arduinos. I liked the software interface. It was very easy to be able to put together some simple C code. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, layout of the computer itself and its inputs and outputs um, were very easy to be able to hook up to and to be able to hook accessories into mm -hmm. um, and interface uh, to. So that was the ultimate reason why I went down the road of, of, of Arduino. Mm -hmm. um, and the processing capability in it is, is not bad. It, as you'll see in a little while, it actually has the ability to be able to run uh, a display screen. Uh, you can connect sensors to it. You can drive servo motors with it. It mm. basically... It, 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 the ad, you know, it, it did everything that it, um, that it that I wanted it to do. Sure. Uh, I could have perhaps gone with a Raspberry Pi or something like that, but it would have been absolute overkill, and the interfacing perhaps would have been a little bit more difficult. Mm. And I guess you battery life is something to think about. You don't want the overhead of the Raspberry Pi's GPU and things like that when, when you're not using right. it. Absolutely right, yes. No, yeah. so the Arduino, again, then is a 5-volt supply, um, uses very little current, whereas the Raspberry Pi is uh, also a 5-volt supply but uses at least an amp or two sure right then so what we've got then is the uh, is the old big track as described um, and uh, I put together a sequence of videos showing uh, what I've done in here um, each and every step of the way and the first thing uh, was actually to remove the old uh, PCB, the old printed circuit board with the old processor mm -hmm. and uh, what we did is we fitted this tiny little processor up here, which is the Arduino. Um, this, this little board here is uh, what's called an H-bridge driver, which drives the two motors, which in turn drive the gearbox mm -hmm. and in turn drive the wheels. And is here. that all original, the motor there? So yes, the, 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 the motors are original. Um, in fact, the reason why I've left this little lump of um, PCB in here is because there's two encoders that count the revolutions of the motors that I haven't wired in yet, mm -hmm. but intend to wire in in the near future. Okay, so that was what the original programming commands would have would have used to uh, count the rotations of the wheels and measure the distance exactly, that it had gone. Okay. Exactly that, yeah. And then um, the other things that we've got here is we have a couple of uh, lithium-ion, 18650 lithium-ion cells that I'd salvaged from used laptop batteries. Mm -hmm. And then at the front of here um, is an ultrasonic distance finder. So I fitted that uh, in order to 
um, like the Russian big track, mm -hmm. stop it from trying to bump into things. Ah, okay. So then on the top of here, uh, we have a little OLED display. And in mm -hmm. fact, if I just turn that on briefly, hopefully you'll see that light up. There you go, it says big track demo mode. Um, and the idea there is then you can actually get some feedback. And that was one of the things that big track didn't have in its, uh, in its day was um, any kind of feedback. The only feedback that you got really was the beeps when you press the buttons. But now you can get some information back about the thing. There's still a lot of work to be done. Um, you know, we need to get the keyboard wired back in. And I'd also like to put some kind of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth in there as well, so that perhaps you can control it from your phone. But that's all okay. sort of future project work. Um, anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it in a so nutshell. Yeah. Come, come a long way so far. Yeah. So um, I just had one other question. In terms of the software, you mentioned um, there's C programming, yes. C source code in there. Yes. Is that source code that you um, wrote yourself and, and compiled, or is that something that's open source and available? Available to other people who want to use it's, it. It's absolutely what we what we've done is we've uh, in fact a, a mate of mine, Richie, um, sat down and he took what I'd done and made it a lot better. Okay. Um, and uh, it's available on GitHub, um, and the link to GitHub is on all of our videos. Well, not on all of our videos. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pop it in the description. And, yes, uh, the link to GitHub will be on in the description. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for showing us that, Howard. I mean, I was just pleased to see the original toy. The fact that it can do so much more is uh, is a bonus. So I've really enjoyed seeing that. And I'll certainly look out for the future videos and see what else you can do. Is, is, is there anything else in the pipeline at the moment that you might be working on? Yeah, there's a lot of little projects going on at the moment, but um, we much prefer being outside and messing around outside. So uh, 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 as England being England, weather's a little bit cold. So we've sure. got a little um, useless uh, switch box thing that we're working on, which is just one of these boxes, you know, you, with a switch on it, you flick the switch and it opens and, and flicks the switch flicks back, the switch and, back closes and closes down. again. Yes. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. a pair of eyes pop out. The other thing, um, maybe a, an exploding box as well. So um, okay. we'll see how that goes. Maybe not demonstrate we, that we, one in the cave. Not in the cave, no. Again, a bit of an outside project. Sure. So. <laughs> well, thank you again, Howard, for coming in. And if you haven't seen Howard's channel, check it out, Dubious Engineering, for everything from cooking pie to, uh, to oh, making yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff there's that goes up. There's some interesting videos <laughs> and it certainly lives up to its name. So Howard, thanks for coming Neil, to the thanks cave. ever so much. And uh, thank you for being my, my first guest in the cave. It's Absolute been a pleasure, pleasure. to have you. Absolute pleasure, thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.